the television station and the radios was all, all announcing that it was going to be a real bad storm. And uh, it was raining for a couple of days before the snowstorm actually started. Well, I think that the big warning came about 12 hours before the storm really hit. We didn't think it was going to be that bad. <laughs> it started, I think it was around 11 o'clock in the evening, it started snowing. And during the night, it really got bad. And by 9.30 or 10 o'clock the next morning, we had seven or eight inches of snow on the ground that kept getting rearranged by the Lord upstairs. Then it started blowing harder and harder. And when we tried to go down some of the streets in town, we found out that we could not make it. So we knew it was getting very bad at the time. I was just dressed in my regular uniform and um, I usually don't wear long underwear and I didn't have any on that day, but I wish I had. But we had snowmobile suits uh, at the station that we could wear. So I think the severity of the wind blowing the snow, it, um, when you went out into it, it was like a bunch of frozen ice hitting you in the face and your eyes would tear up and you could hardly see and uh, basically it was very very nasty at the time it's the worst snowstorm i ever been in in town you could see 100 yards or something like that but once you got out of the corporation limit you could not see your hand two feet in front of your face we had an occasion to be called uh, to assist uh, a wrecker east of town that had a road and had a car in the middle of the road and they wanted it removed and uh, once we left the corporation I mean, it was terrible you couldn't see nothing we had some very large snow drifts around here um, Oak Harbor Junior High football field that is now known as that the snow was piled up uh, on Church Street six and seven feet deep luckily that was opened up by the state highway garage with their big front end loader. And they left their marks on the fence that was around that field because it kept tearing the hole in the fence every once in a while. We had some bad drifts here and there were some drifts 20 feet deep out in the country. Auxiliary force at the time and uh, we had some auxiliary people available. We had some officers that had snowmobiles. Uh, they was available and uh, we probably had a a minimum of five or six people around the station. Plus, at that time, a lot of volunteers was offering their assistance, too. We stayed until everything died down, and usually uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, it got pretty quiet. We'd go home and sleep through the night, and then the next morning, we'd start out again. I think it was like the third day, maybe, before we didn't have to do that anymore. We went back to our regular ship. With inside of town, the corporation, I mean, we could usually get to the calls uh, if we couldn't get there by car or by our uh, vehicle that we rented, we would take and have a snowmobile go to the location. My assistant chief had his snowmobile and uh, we had a part-time officer who had his snowmobile, so we uh, was able to answer all our calls. Officers were told to stay at home, at their homes, the sheriff's department, and uh, work from their homes. If they needed them, they would try to contact them. But most of the officers were snowed in. The only response plan that was in place at the time was left over from the uh, storm of 1969, which we had a procedure to follow to contact the governor's office for National Guard help and so forth. And that was adopted in 69 and was still in the files. And that's what we rever reverted back to. But there was nothing new. And you, at that time, we didn't have all the plans we have now. Phone lines were operating mostly in Oak Harbor. Uh, the only ones that would be down is an individual line going into the house or something like that. But all the phone calls that we received were answered and uh, if it was for an emergency vehicle like an ambulance or anything like that, it was a plow or a front end loader to escort that vehicle to the address. At the time, Gordon Lumber Company had a large front end loader and uh, there was a call up by Rocky Ridge for Mid-County and they took the front end loader and took the ambulance all the way to Rocky Ridge to get to the person. I think that person either broke an arm or broke a leg or something like that. But they, once they started their front end loader, they kept it busy for a week at a time, you know, 24 hours a day. Always getting calls for medication from the drugstore. They couldn't get out 
to get medication. They couldn't get out to get bread or milk. I don't think there was anything else. We, we didn't have anybody that uh, needed really emergency assistance, you know, they had, mostly for medicine and food. We had a lady by the name of Mrs. Marjorie Krigger missing. Uh, she got stranded in a vehicle on 163. Uh, she was a nurse in Toledo and she was on her way to work, I believe. She was reported missing and uh, when the weather broke, we finally sent snowmobiles up 163 and they was able to find her in her vehicle. And she was very smart. She had a disaster preparedness kit in her car. You know, she had extra blankets and I think she had some candy bars. And so uh, she did a good job of preparing for that. I would think that she was in that car for over 15 hours or something like that. Yeah. I think that we lost television channel for a short while, but uh, they came back on the air and uh, they was pretty well stranded up in Toledo and they had their coverage around Perrysburg and Wood County mostly and we were sort of the forgotten area out here in Oak Harbor. We finally went to uh, Grice Motor Sales and rented a four-wheel drive Jeep. We had permission from the safety committee to do so, but some of the councilmen thought that we was wasting the town's money by doing that and said, if you can't get there in your police car, don't go, you know. Well, we didn't, we didn't work that way. So anybody, either grocery stores or gas stations, uh, maybe they might have charged a little more for a record call or something like that, but uh, most of the time, uh, the grocery stores were out of bread and out of milk because the trucks were not getting in. And But there, I don't think there was any price gouge. There was a lot of that in town. Um, there was parked on different streets and snowed in and in snow banks and so forth. And we just had to take our time and clear the streets one at a time. We had uh, Benton Street was pretty bad. And out by Robinson Drive, uh, Park Street Extension was very bad. And those streets are lower out there, so naturally the snow was deeper out there. And in fact, we even got one of the four-wheel drive vehicles we had uh, stuck out there in the snowbank ourselves. We shouldn't have tried to go down that street, but we did. Some farmers came into town on their tractors when they was able to get, get out of their house, you know. There was not too many farm tractors used in Oak Harbor. I think they was just used as a matter of transportation for the farmers. Most of the time, our electric was going very good. Uh, we kept electricity in the station all the time, and uh, there was very few houses without power. That The only ones that was out was with the power lines running to their house where a limb would fall down and maybe break off the line or something. But the power pretty well was uh, maintained throughout the storm. Uh, those that ran low on fuel oil, we had, uh, we had cooperation with uh, Lucky Farmers, and they would help uh, get fuel to them people. A lot of people carried uh, five-gallon cans of fuel oil to their houses and so they could keep warm, you know. Perrysburg, uh, Route 20, and uh, the Turnpike, uh, there was a lot of people that took in motorists over in that area and put them up for two, three days or until they could get going again. And, um, we had a shelter set up in Oak Harbor. We had cots set up in the municipal building. And we had extra blankets. And we, I don't think we used it, though. I, I don't think there was one person stayed there. They, they went someplace else to stay. Companies that was down by uh, Erie Industrial Park, the employees there were trucked to a hotel or motel in Port Clinton and put up by the company, so they was able to get off their shifts. These sm snowmobilers, when they have a snowmobile, they, they dress for the weather and they got everything that they can think of to put on and uh, they were very, very helpful. I mean, if you needed something or needed somebody to get someplace, they, they took them. There was no hesitation. And I think we had uh, an ordinance at the time that prohibited people from riding snowmobiles on the streets in Oak Harbor, which went by the wayside for that time. They was having a ball on the hills that they could slide on. Back of the old junior high school, there used to be the water tower, which was a reservoir where they had water in the ground stored. And they could slide from that hill and they go down to Park Street and then they go underneath the trussle at Park Street so they could slide for about a block if they got on top of the hill. Nobody got hurt, that's the main thing. We didn't lose anybody. They arrived the following day after the storm. They came in with their big huge snowblower mounted on the front of an army truck and water and Church Street, the snow was pretty deep around there and as they drove down the street using that snowblower they just loaded in into other military trucks and then they trucked the snow out to the 
Veterans Park and they filled that all up and they trucked it to the river and they dumped it over the bank. Any place that we had a place to put it, they, they hauled it. But they could load a truck in like two or three minutes and the truck would be loaded. They kept that up for, they cleared all of downtown Oak Harbor. It probably didn't take them maybe a half a day to do all that. Yes, the State Highway Garage had some uh, front end loaders. Their plows couldn't do much out on the highway because there was no place to push it to. They brought in some V plows on the front of their, some of their trucks, which is plows both ways just to open it up. They opened up the roads. Once they got a path down through it, then the other plows could push it off to the side. They kept Benton Street and Water Street and Church Street pretty well open for the village of Carver. Saved our street department a lot of work. I think it was three days after the storm before things started getting back. You know, you get down up and down the streets, the side streets, and I'm sure the parking was bad, yet we got around it. I did try to check the records at the police department from 1978 from the blizzard and the radio logs and everything else. It's all been destroyed because of record retention. There's nothing left that I had recorded, so. I, I believe it was pretty well gone in a couple of weeks. Um, Maybe, maybe not, but uh, it was no problem for us if it would, did remain. At, at the time, uh, we had a bakery in town by, owned by Mr. Rodenhauser, and he offered to bake bread for the community. And he did bake a lot of bread, but the blizzard of 78 was, as far as I'm concerned, one of the second major storms that we had in the area, and that, the other one was the storm of 1969. And I think that was just as bad as the blizzard. It was a lot colder than the blizzard. <laughs> 78 was the coldest and the worst storm, but uh, I think as far as my career, uh, the storm of 69 was really bad. Would I do anything different? Probably so. Probably I would take and have people I would be able to contact right away for equipment and so forth, which we didn't have back then. Bergman's paving company had their front end loaders on the highways working for the snow and on the Bay Bridge, uh, Harmeyer Construction Company had big equipment over to the clear in the Bay Bridge and stuff like that. We never planned for anything like that in Oak Harbor and uh, it was unfortunate that we didn't. Hindsight is always twofold or something like that. Both of them was very nasty storms. And uh, the blizzard of 78, just uh, everybody worked through it and we, we survived. Thank you for the privilege of giving my two cents worth.